Week 11? Problem 11. I don't know what it is about the problems. Like when you have the same number of weeks as you do the problem. There's something zenful about that. All right. Assume a transparent rod of diameter 6 micro, that's micro, micrometers has an index or a fraction of 1.2. Determine the maximum angle theta for which the light rays incident on the rod, on the end of the rod in the figure below are subject to total internal reflection on the walls of the rod. Your answer defines the size of the cone of acceptance for the rod. All right. So there's probably some dirty joke there, but I can't think of it right now, so I'll tell it later when no one's around. So my conceptually understanding here, I like to think of it, so a piece of light comes in, it's going to bounce off, and then it's going to keep reflecting on inside um, the uh, rod. There's like fiber optics type concept here. Um, so the way I like to think of it is like skipping stones off the pond. When you skip a stone, you want it to hit real flat. But if you hit it too hard, it's going to go through. Um, so the idea here is you want to have a very um, small angle where the light hits the side of the rod, and it's going to basically skip off the insides of the um, uh, rod and then continue on. And it's going to be um, inside the rod, I guess. We'll see. We'll go through the maths. All right. So I'm going to start because I have no idea what to do here. But writing down Snell's Law, because if nothing else, I'm pretty sure that's going to apply here. So we have sine theta 1 over v1 equals sine of theta 2 over v2. So we have some light. Comes in. Goes like this. Eh, I can maybe change that guy up a little bit. What? No, I didn't mean to push that button. Nope, nope. There we go. Ah, I made a whole bunch of little teeny dots. Should have made just one big one. All right, I'm going to use a line. Nope. Make it go like this. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So this is, man, that should be blue. This should really be blue. There we go. And thicker. Bam. Perfect. Thank you. Alright, so now that's going to be the um, how the light reflects. So now the, the part we're going to have to worry about here is which angle do we use? Where is this theta 2 and how is it playing play in to the, uh, what we're doing? So, make, ooh, dotted. Yes! I should make it black? Hmm. No, no. There we go. All right, so this is, let's look up Snell's Law real quick, just to verify. Snell's Law. So the um, angle is always measured from the uh, normal, the normal, the normal line, the perpendicular. So this right here is going to be theta 2. And then this is going to be theta 3. Actually, I'm going to take a step back here. So we're going to have, can I make this smaller? Small. There we go. Whoa. Did I go the wrong direction on that? Ah, I think I did. So this guy right here is going to be theta 2. I'll call this guy theta 3. I'll call this guy theta 4. Mm, yep, turn that guy sideways. Yep, because the perpendicular here is left and right. This perpendicular here is up and down. Got it. So now we have our picture. Though I had to draw it crazy small. Okay. Okay, so first thing we're going to have to do then is... So the concept here, before we get too carried away, is once this um, line up here at the top hits the um, side of the wall, what's going to happen is it's not going to reflect, um, it's not going to pass through it, it's not going to refract through, it's going to go straight like this. And this is the limit for complete internal reflection. Complete internal reflection means that when it hits the wall, let's bring this guy down a little bit, oh. there we go, that we know. There we go. 
that theta 4 equals 90 degrees. The idea here is this is what it means by complete internal reflection. So really, this will be the, the maximum angle that you can have to get this 90 degrees here. So if we had this angle smaller then, it would start bouncing back and forth, bew, 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 and such, you know, so forth, with inside the, um, this glass rod. Hmm. Why are you still there? There we go. Okay, so let's find theta 2. Maybe we can work backwards. Ah, so we want to find theta 1, which is what I have affectionately dubbed theta. So we're going to start here and work our way backward. So I'm going to start with sine of theta 4. Hmm, I might like a bigger pen. Bigger pen? Bigger pen. Click. There we go. <laughs> yeah, it's too big. You know, I should, if I was more professional, I'd take care of all this before I started. Sine of theta 4, but I'm not. Equals sine of theta 3 over velocity 3. All right. So velocity, we have an index or a fraction? Okay. So new, now we need to find what the velocity of the speed in, in the glass is. So mm, I'm going to call this 2 and 3. Because if you look back at the picture, which I guess I have to show, you, show it to you for you to see it, um, V2, 3 equals N divided by, nope, equals C divided by. Velocity 2 and 3, 2.99 times 10, 99 times 10 to the 8th divided by, was it 1.6? 1.2, 1.2. Wow, that's a lot of sixes. I'm gonna call it, say it, 2.5 times 10 to the eighth. Yep. Mm -hmm. 2.5 times 10 to the eighth. All right. I know I kind of ignored you guys briefly. That's okay, you'll get over it. So the speed inside the glass, 2.5 times 10 to the eighth. Out here, it's going to be 2.99 times 10 to the eighth, or three. So, I'm going to use this data to find what theta three is. So, sine of theta three equals v three over v four. Times sine of theta four. Okay, so we know that V3, i.e. inside the uh, rod, is going to be slower than V4. So we know that this number, V3 divided by V4, is going to be less than 1. Uh, greater than 1? So V3 here, slow. V4 out here, fast, small, big, small, Big. Yes, yes, totally right. So it's going to be less than 1, so it's going to be 1 divided by 1.2. Because we know we're going to have to use 1.2, because that's the ratio between the speeds. Okay. Right. Small, big. Okay, yep, yep. And then we know that sine of theta 4, we know that theta 4 has to be um, 90 degrees. So th sine of 90 degrees is going to be 1. So it's going to be 1 over 1.2. Because V3 is defined as 2.5 times 10 to the 8th. So that's the same as 2.5 times 10 to the 8th over 2.99 times 10 to the 8th, which is 1 over 1.2. Mm, make sure 2.5 divided by 3. Okay, I'm good with this now. Really, I wasn't trying to convince you. I was trying to convince me. But I played it off as if I was. All right, so now we're going to find the arc sine of 
1 divided by 1.2. So this should give us an angle. Angle like 56.45 equals, implies, theta equals 56.44. I know I said 5, I don't care. I was trying to round unnecessarily. So that gives us theta 3. Perfect. So now we know theta 3. Go back here. God, this picture is so small. So small. 56.44. Did I write 56.44 over here? Pretty sure I did. Yep, okay. So we got 56.44. We know that this guy right here is 90. So we're going to do 90 minus 56.44. Which gives us 33.56. 33.56. So theta 2 is 33.56. All right. Okay, that doesn't give us the answer we want yet, so we're just going to do Snell's Law again. So we're going to say sine of theta 1 over v1 equals sine of theta 2 over v2. Okay, we want theta 1, so make a little implied symbol, v1 over v2 is times sine of theta 2 equals sine of theta 1. Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, okay. So where v1 is out here, and that's fast, and then inside is slow big divided by small should be big so it's gonna be 1.2 equals 1.2 which is the same as 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 2.5 times 10 to the 8th um, if you get confused just actually use the real velocities because we already have them I'm just skipping steps and being lazy yeah that's exactly what I'm doing I like to try and put myself on a pedestal but that's just not happening this time. All right, 33.56. All right, so theta 1 equals sine of degrees 1.2 times arc sine of so to find theta 1 we're going to take the arc sine of 1.2 sine of 33.56 so arc sine of 1.2 sine and it gives us 41.56 41.56 degrees bam and hmm and the diameter of the rod did not matter at all. Hmm. It's almost peculiar. Hmm. 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 Well, that's okay. I'm still pretty confident on this. So, theta 1, as we discovered, is 41.56. 41.56 degrees. And the way we did this was we just drew out the lines here. So we did Snell's law on this surface right here where, we have to, where they already drew the perpendicular and the angle is going to be how far it is from the perpendicular. We then saw another interaction at when we were exiting the um, glass rod. So we had to draw our own perpendicular on that one. It did not come pre-perpendicular. Uh, and then from there we had a theta 4. We know that theta 4, since it's total internal reflection, has to be 90 degrees, i.e. no light escapes. So we already knew what theta 4 was, which means we could find what theta 3 was by Snell's law. Then we could use trigonometry, triangles, to find theta 2. And then we could find theta 1 using Snell's law one last time. And that gives us 41.56. Bam. That's all there is to this problem. Let's head on to problem number 12.